My name is Denis Chernyshov, and this is Eternity Live Forum's interview with speakers who will perform at the forum at 11th November 2022. Eternity Live Forum is a major event, a concentration of experience, knowledge, and research from a number of scientists who will present the latest developments and ways to increase life expectancy and perhaps achieve immortality. So we are glad to welcome our viewers to an interview with an interesting person, great professional, founder AI, autonomous machines, quantum neuro, uh, neuromorphics, brain interface, Abhishek Chudari. Hello, Abhishek. Hi, Dennis. Thank you for inviting me over. Abhishek, our forum is uh, dedicated to research and new discoveries in life extension and immortality. What research are you currently undertaking in life extension? Okay, uh, our approach to life extension is uh, slightly different from uh, those that are doing it purely on a biology perspective. We look at uh, life extension using uh, uh, digital systems. Uh, the word digital, I'm using it for the benefit of your viewers, uh, using man-made systems uh, rather than uh, increase the longevity of the biological system itself. So uh, our research is more uh, oriented towards enabling a person to be able to upload their personality onto a robot, an avatar, or, or onto the metaverse, as we call it now, immersive reality. And uh, there's a very important part of this research where, let's say there are lots of other uh, big companies also making a claim that uh, they will have very soon, they will have a robot that can download or upload your personality onto, uh, but it creates a carbon copy. You are there and the robot is there. You are there and the system is there. Our research and the one that we are going to talk about in, this, in, in the conference is about how to ensure that even though your personality has been downloaded into that avatar, uh, your consciousness, the one that you have in your body right now, it is the same continuation that goes on into the robot. So one moment you're in the body, the next moment you're into the robot. Now, give or take, it's an extension of the human longevity as there is a limit for the biological system. At the end of the day, we are not saying it's immortality, but yes, extension uh, to the extent possible. That, that's, that's the focus of our research. It's very interesting. And is there any tangible progress in life extension research already in your sphere? Okay, uh, in terms of our lab, in terms of our lab, we do have uh, what we call the Dr. Ro or the Tara platform on the avatar. It's avatar robot. It's a teleoperated robot. Uh, conjoined with uh, an autonomous system into the architecture. And uh, how it works is, uh, I'll quote from the movie Avatar. So what happens in that movie is when the remote operator logs out, the, uh, the body, the bioengineered bio body that they had falls down. In our case, that does not happen. The robot becomes autonomous. So it's a telepresence robot that's autonomous. But the beauty is, as you use it, let's say if instead of me, we were interacting through a Tara or a Dr. Ro, and uh, as I used it, or as you used it, it would be imbibing your personality as you're responding to it. It would remember how you're responding. And it has a very practical application in, in healthcare. We're trying to use it as a medical telepresence robot because when doctors do rounds in the hospitals, uh, they're going through all the beds. They look at the charts, the data. Not all of them need their attention. And a doctor's a physician medical doctor, their time is very valuable for the, for the upliftment of the society, for the benefit of the society. Now, uh, majority of the times, the robot which the doctor has been using can respond even though he's not logged in. He may, be do, he may be attending to a patient in some other hospital. If at all, there is now the current focus of our current deliverables are, if at all, there is a scenario which the system, the avatar cannot handle, let's say a critical case or a case it should not be handling because there's a life risk, it will uh, it will buzz the doctor in an innovative, immersive cave we've made. So you kind of enter that cave, it's an immersive reality. Uh, just one point on that. Now, all of this is oriented towards our, uh, what we call the brain chip solution, or that's where the quantum neuromorphics comes in. So it's a unique type of accelerator, AI accelerator, just like you have the GP GPUs, the most common AI accelerator on which your TensorFlows and all uh, work fast. It's based on uh, a specific type of AI accelerator, which we are trying to implement using uh, whatever quantum resources are available to us as a small company. Okay, it's very, very, very exciting what you're doing. And uh, which technologies do you consider are the most significant uh, for life extension? 
Okay, from our side of research, there are two, two pieces of technology which are very important. Right now, from uh, the perspective of taking us to the singularity, the technological singularity, where the autonomous portion of our robot is just as good as a human being. It's like create, create a statue that's good enough and then bring down your personality into it. So that is dependent on how much we can accelerate, how well we can accelerate. At the same time, uh, the other side of the story, let's say this robot, and along with the accelerators, they are the uh, architectures, the AI architectures, as we call them, uh, the way uh, there, is, there is a lot of good progress with LLMs, large language models and all, but a size may not be the only factor which determines intelligence in an artificial system. So uh, there's a lot of good research there. Uh, that's one piece of technology, uh, including quantum neuromorphics, because quantum accelerators, they are the way to go, uh, even for security and cryptography and all. The other part of the technology and why brain interfacing comes in is the way we, uh, we kind of stagger our consciousness onto the robot. So we need very good brain interfacing, uh, the, the way the brain interfaces with the computer, the signals going back and forth, uh, there is a lot of good research happening in terms of the electrodes that are used, uh, microelectrode arrays, a lot of good research that is needed in the nerve growth factors, getting the brain to accept that implant. And then uh, there are more critical challenges like uh, in, the, in that same brain interfacing part. It's a small device that you're fitting on. You're not going to carry a generator with you. You're not going to carry a house with you. Where does the energy for that come from? It's a huge compute. If you're really going to do that brain interfacing and it's going to be with you 24 by seven so that aspects of your personality, subtle aspects, which you are not aware of as a psychologist, I can tell you, you would be aware of them. There's a lot, there's a big part of our personality which is hidden. Now, how does that get captured? It will need to be there 24 by seven. So that interfacing with its aspects of interfacing with the nerves, uh, the neurons, and how do we provide energy to it? These are like uh, the major, major technologies that need a lot of good research. Okay, thank you. Very interesting. And most tricky question, do you believe that science and medicine are capable of achieving immortality for humans in the future? Okay, uh, yes. The answer is yes. Uh, immortality does not mean ad infinitum. It will not go on forever and ever. I do believe nothing is indestructible, not even this universe creation per se, we keep debating, right? How it will end. So it's not ad infinitum, but uh, there's a famous thing that they say, there's a nice thing that they say in maths that whether 9.99 bar, no matter how many places of decimal you have, is that 0 0.99, sorry, is that exactly equal to one? Yes, it is. Because if it's nines or number of nines after the decimal are infinite, no matter how small a value you, you give, the error between one and 0 0.99999 will always be smaller than an arbitrary value. So we will approach it, uh, uh, we'll approach it tangentially, we will approach it uh, to an approximation. Human life as we know it of around maybe 100 years today, 80 years, approximately 80 to 100 years, will certainly go up by many folds. But what is the, the best part of it? Maybe we will take a few generations, maybe a few 20, 30 generations, 100 generations, let's say the worst case scenario. But the quality of life improvement that all of this research will bring about is tremendous. We will have, even on the biology side, our colleagues who are working on approaching it from the bio side, we will have better ways to address diseases. We will have better ways to address genetic problems. Folks like us, we will give you better technology. Uh, we will work with you to make better technology. We're looking for collaborators. So at the end of the day, the experience of human life will certainly keep improving. And yes, absolutely we will achieve a point where our, lo our life will be so long that it will essentially be considered immortal. Long mm -hmm. enough to be considered immortal. Great, thank you very much. And uh, which technologies do you think will support immortality most of all? Okay, apart from the way we are trying to approach it, which is through upload avatar technologies and brain mm -hmm. interfacing, um, I'm a big believer in, uh, in genetics, in biotechnology, and uh, of course, nature had billions of years to evolve us. We are not trying to short circuit that process, but uh, just like uh, in the modern world, we have, a, uh, we have refrigerators and we don't need old methods of cooling water, chilling water. 
we have vaccines, we have medicines, and old methods have died out. Uh, it's just that we are a new instrument in, uh, in nature's hands of evolution itself. And maybe the biological processes, that's my opinion, biological processes were not fast enough. And that's why nature itself, I, I look at it as a personification, is going to help us. And uh, biotechnology and genetics are going to be, so on our side, quantum and biotechnology and genetics. These are going to be the harbingers, the major technologies that will bring about success in, uh, in, in longevity research. Great. Thank you very much. And the last question, in your opinion, what do we need to investigate more at this stage in the study of immortality? Okay. Um, see, I'll give a, all of these technologies have to be investigated. All of these have to be done. But uh, more, I'm sorry to be sounding a little philosophical here, but what good is a life if we are not uh, living it happy? Today, today, humans, we have a guarantee that there is, uh, there is a certain end to it. And I, I wish no one, I mean, as a psychologist, I face this with patients quite often, as uh, with my subjects quite often. Uh, you don't have to really have an immortal life to have a happy life. So we should really be examining the deeper human questions of happiness, of how to make this life better. It might come, come a little tangential to you in terms of what research. Research, I've already spoken. We talk, I've spoken about quantum. I've spoken about a little bit of the domains that I'm not active into, biotech and genetics and all. So uh, those have to be researched. That has to be seen, how to increase the duration, how to approach that uh, limit, uh, the single point of singularity from, a, from the perspective of life, the length of life. But we really need to research the fundamentals of human, human existence fundamentals of what really makes us human. We don't want to become droids and robots ourselves. What makes us creative? What gives us emotions? So these are aspects that have to be really, I mean, let's say whether through our technology, our kind of neuromorphics or brain implants and all, or through genetics, we make, we make immortal zombies. We don't want that. We want beautiful people. We want happy people. So that should be researched a lot more. Uh, from a science perspective, from a social sciences perspective, psychology, sociology, and all. And that will go a big way in giving us not just good results science-wise, but good results as we want it as humanity. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for this great conversation and uh, see you at Thank the you. Eternity Life Forum. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'm looking forward to it. Looking for lots of good collaborations happening there. So see you there. Thank you. See you.